the problem emerges at scale. And that's who our good customer is. People who are a chief audit executive, a CFO, that are worried about their job because they're like, what if I miss something? That That's a good customer. We're finding that highly regulated entities are the ones that are most likely to pay because they're most likely to be fined. There is too much to read for human beings and the computer is able to read all of it very quickly. But another part of it is making sense of these information, correct? So how does the machine helps the human to make sense of the different pieces of information that are in the document. So you can imagine that this machine has different colored highlighters and it goes through tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of pages and highlights where the risks and where the controls are so that the human auditor can follow their existing process, which is not a simple process. There's an ISO process, there's a COSO process. So auditors have over the past 100 plus years, built a way of working. This artificial intelligence fits within that way of working, within their workflow, to automate the tedious part of picking out what sentences are relevant so that they can build a, what's called a risk control matrix. So they can match up what risks are addressed by what controls to maybe identify, oh, there is no risk that matches with this control. It's a redundant control. Or similarly, they may find there's a risk and nothing controlling it. Or they may find repeated risks through time. They may find every year this department mentions the same risks. They don't fix it. They're not instituting the controls. And so this is really a framework for thinking about what the company is doing and finding problems. What the AI is doing is helping that process move forward. If this is true, there is an element of complexity here in understanding the various parts of the test and the various parts of what something means and how things are related to one another. Why is that possible today? Why it's reliable? And why you didn't do this company five years ago? So it actually took two years of development ramp up to get where we are, but there have been many recent advances in uh, deep learning for natural language processing. They're well popularized. We've published some work specifically on how you customize word embedding models, like word representation models to specific domains. That's coming out in February. It's called uh, Sidecar, it's in our GitHub repos. The idea here is that this is sort of the right time for this sort of thing to be addressed. 10 years ago, you would have been using TFIDF or statistical techniques that just weren't as powerful. What type of companies really have a need a particular need for this type of auditing, automation, advanced automation. So can you give us an example? Is I don't know, is, is it United Airlines or rather a logistic companies or an agricultural companies? Let me give you a little bit of background. So we, we are in the market selling and we've announced that a six group is one of our clients. So large, large entity. Our clients really break down into three areas. There's government because they have a lot of documents and care about compliance. There's big businesses, so think like Russell 3000, who are mandated by law to do internal audit effectively. And so they're obviously a good customer because lots of data. And finally, the actual audit firms themselves, the big four and other large audit entities that do consulting engagements to do audit. So if you are a small company and you don't have it like 10,000 plus employees, huge amounts of documents, you can just read the reports. You don't need AI. You can just do it. The problem emerges at scale. And that's who our good customer is. People who are a chief audit executive, a CFO, that are worried about their job because they're like, what if I miss something? That That's a good customer. Does the customer tend to be more like in the financial industry, in the healthcare industry that are regulated industries? Or you see it's more like connected to the size of the company and the complexity of what they do? So it's actually both. We're finding that highly regulated entities are the ones that are most likely to pay because they're most likely to be fined. But also you have, for example, governments that, that just have a huge amount of documents and are not able to do this job. They're being tasked with a job that they're not able to do. And so they're looking for a solution and we're providing a solution, but it's really both. You have to have a large amount of documents and also you have to care enough about the cost of missing things.